Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr Ramjit Ali dear scholars uh, the policy debates over a uh, government that has many facts so far we have considered the traditional view and the cardian views of government debt according to the traditional view a government budget deficit expands aggregate demand and stimulates uh, output in the short run but crowds out capital and depresses economic growth in the long run according to the ricardian view a uh, government budget deficit has none of these effects because consumer understand that a uh, budget deficit represent merely the postponement of uh, tax burden with these two theories uh, as a background we know consider several uh, other prospectives uh, on government debt so for this purpose in this video we are going to discuss other prospectives uh, on government debt so let's first discuss about uh, balanced budgets versus optimal fiscal policy dear scholars in the united states many state constitutions require the state government to run a balanced budget a recurring topic of political debate is whether the constitution should require a balanced budget for uh, federal government as well uh, most economists oppose a strict rule requiring the government to balance its uh, budget there are three reasons why optimal fiscal policy may at times call for a budget deficit or surplus so let's discuss the detail of these three reasons so first is stabilization a budget deficit or surplus can help stabilize the economy in a sense a balanced budget rule would revoke the automatic stabilizing parts of the system of taxes and transfers when the economy goes into a recession taxes automatically fall and transfers automatically rise although these automatic responses help stabilize the economy they push the budget into deficit a strict balanced budget rule would require that government raise taxes or reduce spending in a recession but these actions would further depress aggregate demand discretionary fiscal policy is more likely to move in the opposite direction over the course of the business cycle in 2009 for example president barack obama signed a stimulus bill authorizing a large increase in spending to try uh, to reduce the severity of the recession even though uh, it led to the largest budget deficit in more than half a century let's discuss the second policy tax uh, smoothing Uh, a budget deficit or surplus uh, can be used to reduce the distortion of incentives caused by the tax system high tax rates uh, impose a cost on society by discouraging economic activity a tax on labor earnings for instance reduces the incentive that people have to work long hours because this disincentive uh, becomes uh, particularly large at a very high tax rate the total uh, social cost of taxes is minimized by keeping tax rates relatively stable rather than making them high in some years and low in others so economists call this uh, policy tax smoothing uh, to keep tax rates smooth a deficit in necessary in years of uh, unusually low income we can call it a recession or unusually high expenditure we can call it a war periods here is the third reason intergenerational redistribution a budget deficit can be used to shift a tax burden from current to future generations For example, uh, some economists argue that uh, if the current generation fights a war to preserve freedom, future generations benefit as well and should bear some of the burden. Uh, 
to pass on some of the wars cast the khan generation can finance the war with a budget deficit the government can later retire the debt by leaving taxes on next generation these considerations lead most economists to reject a strict um, balanced budget rule at the very least a rule for the fiscal policy needs to take account of the recurring uh, episodes uh, such as recession and wars during which it is reasonable for the government to run a budget deficit so let us discuss about the fiscal effects on monetary policy Dear scholars, in 1985, Paul Swartkus uh, told uh, Congress that the actual and prospective size of the budget deficit heightened uh, spectrum about our ability to control the uh, money supply and contain inflation. A decade later, Alan Greenspan claimed uh, that a substantial reduction in the long-term prospective uh, deficit of the United States will significantly lower uh, very long-term inflation expectations. Uh, both of these Fed chairmen uh, apparently saw a link between uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy. We have uh, discussed these effects in our previous video as well. We saw that uh, one way for the government to finance a budget deficit is simply to print money, a policy that leads a higher inflation in the economy. Indeed, when country uh, experience hyperinflation, the typical reason is that fiscal policy makers are relying on inflation tax to pay for uh, some of their spending. These ends of uh, hyperinflation almost always coincide with the uh, fiscal reforms that include large cuts in government spending and therefore a reduced uh, uh, need for senorate. In addition to uh, this link between uh, budget deficit and inflation, some economists have suggested that uh, a high level of debt might also encourage the government to create inflation. Because uh, most government debt is specified in nominal terms, uh, the real value of the debt falls. When price level rises, uh, this is the usual redistribution uh, between creditors and debtors uh, caused by unexpected inflation. Uh, here the debtor is the government and the creditor is the private sector. But this uh, debtor, unlike others, have access to the monetary uh, printing press. A high level of debt might encourage the government to print money thereby raising the price level and reducing the real value of his debt. Let us discuss the further explanation about the fiscal effects uh, on a monetary policy. Despite these concerns uh, about a possible link between government debt and monetary policy, there is uh, little evidence that this link is important in most uh, developed countries. In the United States, for instance, inflation was high in the 1970s, even though uh, government debt was low relative to GDP. Monetary policymakers got inflation under control in the early 1980s just as uh, fiscal policymakers started running large budget deficits and increasing the government debt. Thus, although monetary policy might be driven by fiscal policy in some situation such as during classic uh, hyperinflation, this situation uh, appears not to be the norm uh, in uh, most countries uh, today. There are several reasons uh, for this.
First, uh, most governments can finance deficit by selling debt uh, and uh, do not uh, uh, need to rely on a center aid. Second, central banks uh, often have enough independence to resist uh, political pressure for uh, more expansionary monetary policy. Third and most important, uh, policymakers in all parts of government know that uh, inflation is a poor uh, solution uh, to fiscal problems. So let's discuss about the debt and the political process. Dear scholars, the fiscal policy is made not by angels uh, but by an imperfect uh, political process. Some economists worry uh, that the possibility of financing government spending by issuing uh, that makes the political process all the worse. This idea has a long history. 19th century economist Knud Wicksell uh, claimed uh, that if the benefit of some type of government spending exceeded its cost, it should be possible to finance that spending in a way that would receive unanimous support from the voters. He concluded that government spending should be undertaken only when support is, in fact, nearly unanimous in the case of debt finance. However, uh, Viscal was uh, concerned uh, that uh, the interest of uh, future taxpayers are not represented at all or are represented inadequately in the tax approving assembly. Okay, moving toward the further explanation about the debt and the political process. Many economists record this theme more uh, recently in their 1977 book Democracy and Deficit. James Conan and Richard Ragnar argued for a balanced budget rule for fiscal policy on the grounds that uh, it will have the effect of bringing the real costs of uh, public outlays to the awareness of decision makers. It will tend to dispel the illusionary sometime for nothing aspects of uh, fiscal choice. Similarly, Martin uh, Filstein, once uh, an economic advisor to Raylan Reagan and a long time critic of the budget uh, deficit, argues uh, that only the hard budget constraints of having to balance the budget can force uh, politicians to judge uh, whether spending uh, benefits uh, uh, really justify its cost or not. These arguments have led some economists to favor a constitutional amendment requiring Congress to pass a balanced budget. Often these proposals have escaped a clause for, for some time of national emergency times such as wars and depression when a budget deficit is a, a reasonable policy response. Uh, some uh, critics of uh, uh, these uh, proposals argue that even with the escape clause, uh, such a constitutional amendment would tie the hands of policymakers uh, too severely. Uh, others claim that Congress uh, would easily evade the uh, balanced uh, budget requirement uh, with accounting uh, tricks as we have uh, uh, discussed in our previous videos uh, as well as in our current discussion um, we make it clear that the debate over desirability of a uh, balanced budget amendment uh, is as much political as economic. Okay, moving towards the international uh, dimensions about the uh, uh, government debt, government debt may affect a nation's role in the world economy as well. When a government budget deficit uh, reduces national uh, saving, uh, it often leads to a trade uh, deficit, which in turn is financed by borrowing from abroad. For instance, many observers uh, have blamed U.S. fiscal policy for the current switch of the United States from a major creditor uh, to the world economy to a major debtor. Uh, this link between the budget deficit and trade deficit uh, leads to 
true further effects of uh, government debt let's discuss the detail of two effects first high levels of uh, government debt may increase the risk that uh, an economy will experience a capital flight and abrupt decline in demand for a country's asset in the world financial markets international investors are aware that a uh, government can always deal with its debt uh, simply by defaulting this approach was used as far back as uh, 1335 when england's uh, king edward iii defaulted uh, uh, on his debt uh, to italian uh, bankers more recently uh, several latin american countries defaulted on their uh, debts uh, in the 1980s and russia did the same in 1998 the higher the level of uh, government debt the greater the temptation of default thus as government debt increases uh, international investors uh, may come to fear default and curtail uh, their lending if this loss of confidence occurs suddenly the result could be the classical uh, symptoms of capital flight a collapse uh, in the value of the currency and an increase in interest rates so uh, as we have discussed in our previous video uh, uh, in detail that this uh, precisely what happened uh, in the case of mexico in the early 1990s when default appeared uh, likely okay moving towards the international dimension and the second reason uh, of the debt second uh, high levels of government debt financed by foreign borrowing uh, may reduce a nation's political clout and world's fear this fear was emphasized by economist ben fredman in his 1988 book day of reckoning he wrote world's power and influence have historically enlarged Uh, to creditor countries it is not unpredicted that america emerged as a world power simultaneously with our transition from a debt nation to a creditor supplying investment capital to the rest of the world fred must just that if the united states continues uh, to uh, uh, run large trade deficits it will eventually lose some of its uh, international influence so far the record has not been kind to this high passes the united states had run trade deficits throughout the 1980s 1990s and the first decade of the 2000s and uh, nonetheless remain a leading superpower but perhaps other events such as collapse of the soviet union offset the decrease in uh, political clout uh, that the united states would have experienced because of uh, its increased indebtedness so this is all about the other perspectives uh, on the government debt so see you with another video ciao